right, guys. So here we go. We're going to listen to Outer Wilds, the full hour and 12 minute soundtrack. While I'm in peaceful mode, I will be looking at some comments every now and then, and I will definitely still be responding to the music, except that maybe this is just a different way to do it. So we'll just see if this works. And, uh, uh, and even though after this will be done within an hour, I'll probably stick around and do a couple more afterwards, uh, just in case anybody's still hanging around. <laughs> All right, let me get it going here. And here we go, guys. This is Outer Wilds OST. I don't know exactly which one this is from which um, game version, but you guys will tell me. So here we go. <laughs> unique that little twist right there that was the intro of the soundtrack I think we talked about the acoustic elements and I've done one of their, their tracks before it's just beautiful combination the banjo this beautiful acoustic guitar here it's stunning You know what's really cool about what they're doing is that they utilized uh, in that part that we just heard where there was unison stereo, beautiful, beautiful stereo, but it was between a guitar and the banjo. And even though the guitar, it sounds like even the, the, the guitar is playing the exact notes as the banjo, but because of the textures of the instruments, it's delivering a different sound. So very unique um, left, right panning use of two separate instruments playing identical things, but because of the sound of their instruments, gives us such a very unique taste. And then it starts to bloom up with an electric guitar that has a lot of reverb on it and a nice, beautiful ambient wash. I love, love, love this. <laughs> A little subtle moog sound in the back, that melody.
That slight arpeggiation in the background. Now it's being taken over by the banjo. That's great. That was cool. Oh, God, I love hearing the nuances of string noise. God, it's, you know, it's just, there's just something about those nuances of string noises, the fret, the finger. I love how steeped the compositions are in making sure that there's ambient elements in there to keep you in the spaciness of it all. that's giving us a little bit of a support to those very unique, very reverb delayed out, we call it infinite reverb on those guitar and banjo kind of picks that just ring out. Just like that. That is cool. Is it me, or could you just listen to this and not even play the game? I mean, I feel like this is the soundtrack I could just lock off on my TV and just let it play while I'm, you know, doing whatever. It's so cool, it's so ambient, such a chill thus far. diamonds. What well, doesn't matter, I'm in creative. was lapsus, you're right. There's a little bit of dissonance in these colors that he's using in his arrangements here. Those falling off microtonal parts of the pad kind of reminds you of like U2 <laughs> with a flashback of Bad Mushrooms, <laughs> if you know what I'm talking about. It's kind of in and out of the arpeggiation while there's these just darker pulsing pad movements. Some of them kind of slide off tonally. Nope, I'm not giving up on survival mode. I'm just having some fun and trying something new here.
I would love to know what's going on in the game during that one pass right there. It's very spacey. Hey, Shrimp Sama, thank you so much for your um, prime. I really appreciate it. Is the basis of Outer Wilds mostly things that are being done? Is it like Wild West in space or something? Because I did do one, and I remember about the campfire and the robot playing the banjo, but is that kind of, can't recall if that's what it was, a blend of like that environment, camping outdoors and wild, but yet in a space or a universe kind of setting or something like that. Oh, is that what it is, Jean-Claude? All right. Oops, which one am I pointing? Guys, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna dig until I can't dig anymore. I wanna see what's at the bottom here. Oh no. Wait, what happened? You can die in creative? Oh my goodness. I hit the bottom of something. Okay, good, give me a second. What I love is what the composer does is even though this is a very ambient piece here, the textures of the returning, let's just say, character sound of that banjo, very, very light. It's not a really big part of the composition, but it's like making sure that you have not quite a le motif, but a motif of sorts, a sonic motif. Oh, I love that bottom end he just added there. arpeggiation in the background. Brilliant. I love that. Yeah, I lost everything. Those are some great little nuances in the swelling of the synth programs. Those breathing and pulsing and uh, textures there. Very hypnotic, very seductive, don't you think? Oh, thank you for that, Corey. I needed that. Oh, the perfect little track to sneak up on my property here. on that stacked key, but not in notes, but in the delay aspect of it.
This is how I learned to make obsidian <laughs> for you Minecrafters. Beautiful. Get that cello in there. been like kind of maybe an establishing scene piece of music because it was really short. Yeah, I know I listened to one of these already, so I'm just letting the whole soundtrack kind of play through. trippy use of soundscape work here. It's kind of a trippy sunrise too. <laughs> yeah, it was some kind of an interlude there. sounds very ambient oh there's night vision huh I'll have to check that out do you hear what sounds like a little Tuvian throat at the very bottom Tuvian or Tuvan Yeah, definitely throw singing vibes right there. Bloody Crow, I don't know what DLC stands for.
downloadable content. Oh, I see. What oh, expansion pack? You know, a good percentage of the soundtrack thus far is very ambient oriented. And like, because I don't know what the visuals are on this. Once again, I can only assume that the game itself has got to be, is, is it an aggressive game? Like, is there a lot of bosses in Outer Wild that you have to, you know, constantly be going up against of that nature? Because it doesn't sound like it has anything tense, anything grindy, anything for you to like, you know, get yourself all nerved up. Oh, no combat. So what do you call this kind of a game? Is it sandbox or platform or, or is it like journey? Something like that. Oh, narrative. Adventure puzzle, okay. Ooh, very trippy here what he's doing with the piano. Hang on for a second, I wanna go back and I want to play just a little bit before this. It's going to be tough, but let's listen to this piece again. Listen, listen to the unique soundscapey. Hear it right now creeping up. That high end little arpeggiation you hear way in the back. It's soundscapey, but it actually has a tonal value that's dissonant to this. So while the piano is being very contempl contemplative, contemplative, that is like the sound in the background kind of gnaws at you. It kind of makes sure that it doesn't settle you into this really nice little piano. Archaeology, I like that. That sounds really cool. I got to get some new stuff here because I lost everything in my death. Space archaeologist. Wow, mate, that's going to be really cool. Maybe I'll do that after I learn how to play Journey. Very unique mallet sound on that piano. I don't know if he's adding that as a second percussive layer, because it sounds just a little too forward in the, in, the, in the recording for it to be regular hammer piano, the felts of the hammer. But do you guys hear that? You guys hear a little bit of that hammer sound? Wow, that was a trippy piece. Hey, sweetie Betty, how are you? Sweetie Betty.
Yeah, it's creative mode. It does make it break. I just realized what was going on. Let's go, where's my, where am I? No pun, but this is a real spacey, trippy composition. Well, I can always put it back, Kairu. I am so interested in what this game is all about. I just might have to go buy it. Sorry guys, I'm not spacing out, I'm listening to the music. <laughs> Very melancholy. Like it is, it's like, it's almost like, so far the composition has been, except for the first two pieces that had the beautiful guitar, this kind of insecure drift with little sparkles of hope and then at times pulling you into some kind of an abyss. You know, I think, I mean, does that not sound maybe kind of close to what you might be feeling, perhaps? Oh, jeez, guys, I'm a little lost now. It's also a good word for my situation right now. You're right, abyss. I can't find the hole in the sky for me to get out of. Oh man, I'm in trouble. He's definitely using some really unique cre creative sounds with his pads, his ethereal ambient pads. Looks like we got something now with a little bit of rhythm to it, so. Ooh, I found my way back. Ma hollow okay, cool.
this has an essence of an old score. And if you guys, are, if anybody here is old enough, might remember Chariots of Fire. And though that theme was a lot more melodic than this in a very uplifting way, this has that kind of spaciness, but the percussion of and letting the tail off with the delay is giving you that vibe. Just slightly, it does not 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 in a, not in a melodic direct way, but the use of that percussion. You know that. It's just an element. Yeah, you're right. Dihadaka, Doctor Hidaka. Yes, it's just it's just an element of it. But okay, let me get out of here. I need to build something. And it also has a little bit of the vibe of Peter Gabriel's um, from the So album. I forgot what the name of that track was. That breathing kind, kind of hollow ambient pad that was kind of, I think it was probably the, the, the main element of the chord changes. It had a little bit of that Peter Gabriel thing going on in there. Love to see what's actually happening in the scene on this one. This kind of composition, I've done actually quite a few of these for music libraries. These are the ones that are supposed to make you feel uncomfortable and unsettled without using overly aggressive tones. And what a lot of that is, is that these sustained notes that are in the middle of the of, of your key complex, and the bottoms are moving around it a little bit, but it's that very hollow sound, like right there, and how this composer loves to do microtonal dipping, like detune things that just make you, you know, very uneasy vibe here. I hope nobody has vertigo because I'm going for it.
Very, very, very super spacey. see what the sun's doing. happening by accident by the way but it sure does work really trippy with this music it's like el levitating so far everything in the last let's say 10 minutes of compositions have all been very ethereal oriented so in other words these compositions are not built around any melodic structure there's no you know les motifs there's nothing that's repetitive there uh, that's kind of bringing you back to a hook as much as it is an establishing ambiance, um, you know, for, for the game. And I think maybe, I don't know, this is, uh, there's some people who have left comments about um, how certain soundtracks really are real super rich with this kind of ambient composition that's there just to give you that ethereal vibe. And... Um, doesn't have a lot of melodic structure so some people find that maybe a, a little bit uh, less musical that's a good way to put it I, I guess it all a lot of this also really has to do with um, if you're listening to this while gameplay so you're obviously into the gameplay listening to this ambient ethereal music so it's obviously adding to you know all the senses as you're playing the game so this particular pad is has a little bit more space style drone elements to it there's that occasional drift tone to it and there's actually but the lower notes is what's making it dissonant the hums at the bottom hey Xerl thank you so much for coming by I appreciate that Cool. I hope the Outer Wilds people don't get <laughs> confused that I'm on Mine Minecraft while listening to the music. Yeah, you see, at this point, it's still just a dark, you know, soundscapes. He's moving soundscapes. But there are hidden tones behind it. So it's not just all uh, what I would call metallic, uh, heavily loaded reverb um, creativity, let's just say. So you have these occasional tones that'll come slipping in and out. And actually that drone, that space drone behind it actually does, do, does have tonal value. It's just not letting you lock into any one thing at any one time so I'm gonna guarantee I can almost guarantee you at this point in the game is a lost feeling perhaps like that's what the composer wants you to feel completely lost yes it is very very loose
again, this is another piece that, that is, um, you know, um, trying to get these guys to have babies here. Let's see if this will work. Oh, <laughs> a baby popped out right there. Oops, I don't want to get in the middle of their pseudo pseudo. Um, once again, this is just more of the establishment of like an ambience that is just fully drift. This is all drift music. Now you see those accents, those really hardcore digital accents that sweep in and out of this piece? I, it's got to be, it, it has to relate to whatever's happening inside the scene there. I can't see. It could be random, but in my mind, the imagery that this is creating this particular piece, as you have this really kind of dark, hollow pad, and then they sizzle in these digital, and they're not quite sweeps if they actually correlate with something that's actually visual. Like somebody just said, kind of like a shooting star kind of vibe. It's giving me a little Pink Floyd vibe. I gotta stop this for a second. The reason being is that, you know, as 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 sparse as the arrangements are using multiple arpeggiations, um, it is such a beast to manage getting a real cohesive sound out of these things that have these long tail reverbs. And it. You know, it's kind of like that that metal. Uh, there's a rock and roll genre that was turned on to me during my other channel called shoegaze, and that's when this these bands um, actually are playing. They're live. A lot of them really. It's like the pride of it is like you know recording them live at a show, and they have a lot of post stomp pedals uh, or something like that, and um, and they let the chords ring out and they let everything just kind of swim and delay and stuff like that. And it's a beast to manage. Sometimes you can get away with things if you have delay and reverb on it. As a matter of fact, I remember in the 70s when I first started engineering um, back in the 1900s. Um, I always used to think it was such a great little trick if somebody was slightly out of tune, just add reverb to it. <laughs> it was just something about that, that kind of maybe just, I, you know, if you're out of tune, you're out of tune. But if it was just like this fractionally low, I said, well, I'll put a little reverb on it. We'll bury it in the reverb or something. Um, but it, when you have so many things happening, if you listen, once I start this back, listen to how many things have long tails on them. So be it by reverbs or maybe just by the release of the sound. So when the, the composer releases his um, fingers from the keyboards, that it'll still sustain and hang out there. And one funky note, can stink the whole section up. So li listen for that. And then there's one arpeggiation that's pretty dry that you're gonna hear 
that <coughs> if that was loaded, that would have been a, a real challenge to, to work in the mix. Well, listen to the rest of it in the back. Maybe that was a turnaround segment, that little section we just heard. Oh, there's that trippy microtonal stuff. It's that meandering piano that has a couple of those crank notes in there. Light-handed. These aren't quite storm drums. Um, they sounds like they can coming. They can come from the RMX stylus at a very low level. For those of you who know, that piano though, so off-putting. Not pudding like chocolate pudding.
be nice if he had the ninth in there. <laughs> but one kind of crept in there. almost like this really loose the highest part of that that melody that we're da, da. kind of using like it's using a flute element in the programming of that sound there's those notes again <laughs> Everybody's probably asking, all podcasters and channels like mine ask. And we just might have to circle back to Marty. Pablo just released a new video uh, game like this last month or something. Once again, this is
So that must have been in a transition, what we just heard. Like you got to the next level or something of that nature. What's that? Well, now we're re being reintroduced now to the acoustic work. Let me see how far away. We are in the soundtrack. At the 55 minute mark. Oh, I love this. It is a very unique instrument, Doc Doom, when it's out of what our public perception is of how the banjo is played. mess around with the pan there. God, that was great. And I, I really needed that after hearing like a half hour worth of soundscape work. That was beautiful to get into that, some uh, organic music. There's a little bit of a dark muted guitar back there. Can you hear it? Beautiful, it's great blend. A little heaviness. if you know if you saw if you perked up like I did right there you know why that's beautiful I needed that
What a great blend of organic or you know traditional music, the cello, the violin, the viola, I think might have been in there, and that that hybrid fusion of other kind of stemmed pads. Sounds like me having an asthma attack. This is cool. This sounds kind of. No, it's not a kazoo. I don't think so. No, you're right. This has got to be it for a real funny character in the in the. Um... <laughs> That has to be for somebody. Yeah, that was really, would have loved to see what was behind that or visual on this. Another transition. Harmonica in that. Zip line of the piano. The this score by far is probably one of the more accessible scores or game gaming compositions I've heard. Uh, and what I mean accessible is is that it's it's a lot like Minecraft is very accessible. The arrangements are not more of a pull to your senses than let's say bombastic gigantic orchestral pieces. It sounded like somebody dropped something. Nice voicings with the guitar. Composer uses these effects that kind of swim the tone in and out. Kind of a detuning that's going on there. It's really big on messing around with the tuning.
Yeah, patty cakes. I'm just trying something new. See if it makes for any fun. Nice little swell up volume ups with the guitar. So the strum will probably happen now. Then it swells it right back up. PM and I wonder where that was in the gameplay if that was something that was just going to be repeated. Dynamically, what I love about this is that that little banjo pattern is a very intimate but tucked in the back mono sound, just right into right here. But he gives it this like warm embrace. Because the banjo's got a kind of a high tone to it, yeah? So he's, he gave that nice little bottom kind of analog-y pad sound to it just to give it nice thick richness. banjos very chill pattern here once again this has got to be some kind of that part in the exploration where it's just like uh, in the game where it's just I don't know I, I it's it, it Hard for me to take a guess, but something that's just very kind of like up a hill mundane. Now we're back into uh, Space Mountain. planet oh I see so it actually has the banjo has a character theme to something into the game yeah is that kind of what you're saying there very trippy how much time do we have left in there? we still got some time here
there's always that little element. Every time he does this kind of spacey thing, there's a very high-end kind of Morse code kind of a thing happening. You heard it just tail off in there. Ooh, dark chord right there. Slightly sinister. there makes you soon. That was one of those other transitions maybe like you get to a point of the game and it brings you to another universe perhaps maybe that was one of those kind of things going on there yeah the villagers deserve some flowers was that it let's see if that was that wow that was it we listened to an hour and 12 minutes of Outer Wilds. That was actually pretty cool. So, uh, now I definitely have to go buy the game. Um, and especially since the platform is non-violent for me, <laughs> you know, without a doubt, um, this is one of those things where, like I'm down for like beating up the zombies on Minecraft, but I think I'm, I'm cause I'm really looking forward to doing Journey with you guys. Uh, I just don't know if I can do it this Sunday or whatever. You know, I bought the game already. I just haven't even turned it on, but I want to start from scratch and it's not going to be an OST session. It's just going to be you guys learn, helping me learn how to play Journey. But as I may have said before, um, I, I believe maybe a lot like this game, Journey and Outer Wilds, what they may have in similarity, you guys will tell me right now, I don't know, is that it's just, there's stuff that's happening for the game, but it's all soundtrack wall to wall. I mean, is that what Outer Wilds was? Kind of, it, just, it just kind of felt like that was the kind of game, Outer Wilds, that was soundtrack wall to wall. And I, and I think Journey's the same way, yeah? 